Who owes when you go? Understanding how your debts can impact those you leave behind is an important part of estate planning. Perhaps you've seen a movie or read a book in which a child or some other member of the family is pursued for debts left behind by a parent or sibling, and you're worried the same could happen to you. Or more likely, you think how awful that that can happen. Well, let's look at what happens with unpaid debt when a person dies and try to clear the air. Because depending on the laws of the state that the estate is in and the type of debt, sometimes nothing whatsoever happens. An estate often conjures up pictures of English land with a picturesque home, but it's really much simpler than that. An estate is whatever assets the deceased owned at their death. This can include things like vehicles and other personal effects, including homes, jewelry, artwork, etc., financial accounts, and even digital assets. For more on digital assets, please see an article in this current issue titled Digital Assets. It's more than cryptocurrency. When someone dies, the estate goes into probate. Probate is the process of paying debts and distributing any remaining assets to survivors. It's a way of closing the book on your life. Depending on the state and your estate, the probate process can take anywhere from a couple of months to a few years. In addition, if property is owned in more than one state, because probate is governed by the laws of each state, more than one probate may be required. Not all of a person's assets are necessarily considered part of an estate for probate purposes. Life insurance policies, annuities, and qualified retirement accounts go directly to the beneficiary. That's why when you are writing a will, you shouldn't include those items because whoever you have designated as a beneficiary on those assets will override anything in the will anyway. Tip. If you do have those accounts, review them every few years to make sure your beneficiary choices are up to date. Every state has its own list of priorities for how debt is paid. A general idea of those priorities in order would be funeral expenses, the cost of administering the estate, taxes, and hospital slash medical bills. Some states have community property laws, for instance, Washington, the state I reside in, has community property laws that gives each spouse the right to transfer one half of the state, the estate, to a beneficiary, even one that is not the surviving spouse. In community property states, a surviving spouse can be responsible for paying back any debt. Also, if debt is joined, is also, if debt is jointly owned, such as with a co-signed loan, the co-signer would continue to be expected to pay the debt. Still, a person can die and still pass on assets even if there isn't any means to pay off debts because it is the estate and not the survivors that creditors go after when looking for compensation. Relatives and executors generally do not owe out of their own pockets for the debts of the deceased. Debt collectors can contact family members and friends to get contact information for the surviving spouse, parent of a minor, guardian, executor, administrator, or anyone else in charge of discharging the deceased person's debt, but can generally only do so one time and may not discuss the debt with anyone other than those listed above. You may want to consider speaking with a lawyer if you are concerned about who will be, who will be required to pay or if you are being contacted by a debt collector and need clarification on whether you would be responsible for any debt. <laughs>